and you can give your feedback on them as well. And then we can take questions, okay? So first off, establish a rapport with your patients. And the reason why I say this is that one of the things that'll help ease your anxieties if you can start getting results from your patients and getting results from your patients is having them to trust you first. I think sometimes too many new grads come in and we have all the facts, but we don't, we forget uh, our heart that we got at the bedside. You know, that is why nurse practitioners are the, like, I can't even, what is it, the last eight years, we're like the most trusted profession because we actually stop and listen and we actually act on what's being told to us. So don't, our bedside manner is our strength. OK, so we know if you've worked any time at the bedside at all, you've had to do clinicals, you know how to break the ice with people, you know. And so establishing that rapport, you will literally have somebody who would do anything for you. I mean, I hate to say I hate to say it like that, but like <laughs> you want them to adhere to your care plan. <laughs> Right. Their so, for sure. Yeah, they need to understand that you care and that you're not just, tr they're not a number. I have heard so many people say, well, they're only, they're only prescribing this medicine because they're getting a kickback from it. And now at one point in time, people did do that, but they don't do that anymore. But you can't tell your patients that <laughs> they don't know that, you know. And so you want to convey that you care and that you're coming from, yes, scientific research, but you're also looking at them as a person as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And like on that note, like I think that like one of the things is that like I had a really hard time with and I my students I think have a hard time with too is that like especially with diabetes, right? Like there's this whole like one, two, three, four, five, six, like all these things that you need to do for them. They need to be on ACE. They need the microalbumin. They need to check their feet. You need to educate them. About their feet. It's like, it's like a lot. Right. And that's just like a check-in. That's not even like a new diagnosis. Right. And like, I think that like, it's, it's, we need to acknowledge like in terms of that building rapport is that people are like, they're going to go home and live their lives. And it feels very final and very serious. And it is, but at the same time, like even if you did that whole laundry list of all the things, you checked all the boxes, they're going to go home to their regular life and they're going to come back in three months. It doesn't feel mm -hmm. like they're going to come back in three months because the first time you see somebody, you say come back in three months. It's like, oh my gosh, are they going to make it? <laughs> at least, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but like, like that will come with time of like, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about your microalbumin today because they're going to get overwhelmed and they're not going to come back. At least that's what yeah. I experienced is that I would throw yeah. things at people because I needed to check all my boxes. And like, they just, they were like, Whoa, I'm, I don't like her. Yes. <laughs> she stresses me out. <laughs> or they come back and they're like, yeah, I just didn't do any of that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you, uh, Victoria said, I'm also afraid I'm losing all of the knowledge that I have gained while in school since I'm not currently practicing any tips on keeping that info fresh in their mind while awaiting. So Kevin said, keep up with journal readings. That is good. Also take advantage